what is happening jaguar fans and cardinal fans here on a thursday edition of locked on jaguars and locked on cardinals this is the ultimate crossover edition and i'm joined by two of my brothers from another mother my man bo brock i hope i said your last name right bo brock i'm always messing that up and then <laughs> alex clancy from uh locked on cardinals as they are set to visit tia bank field this weekend and the two and cardinals will face the oh and two jaguars fellas what's going on man what's up ready to roll I'm ready to talk some jags oh yeah and i'm ready to find out uh what kyle murray and that crew has going on it seems like a lot bo they y'all got a lot going on right now nfc offensive player of the week with kyler murray and then last week it was the nfc defensive player of the week and chandler jones man i mean the star power it's real the youngsters they're playing well and then a uh, little bit of luck helped this team to two and oh so you know they're, they're riding the wave right now one of the things i said in our previews was that there ain't no way in hell cliff kingsbury is ever going to out coach urban meyer and as it turns out uh, Urban was very complimentary in his press conference today about the Arizona Cardinals, as I have been all week. The one thing about it is when Urban described what he wanted to be like, a fast team with a dynamic quarterback, guys that run on defense and that disrupt the other team's quarterback, I promise you, if you just take that description and you look it up somewhere, you put it into some sort of navigation system, it's going to point right towards Arizona because that's exactly the type of team you have is exactly the one that he described. Yeah, it's interesting because, yeah, as you mentioned, like the a rookie quarterback's best friend is a run game and a defense. And, and like with the Cardinals, it was kind of weird early on with Kyler. And we're starting – last year was the first year where things kind of seem a little bit in place with the wide receiver one, et cetera. And then this year, I have no idea what the hell is going on. Yeah, like we say that we do, but like there's been so much like eye candy and we're trying to figure out exactly what's real and what's not and what you can trust and what you can't. So I think on Sunday, unfortunately for the Jags, this is the week where the Cardinals need to kind of instill dominance and try to instill dominance and we'll see if they'll be able to do it. And this is going to be it's, it's funny to talk about Cliff and I would rather I never thought I would save the day that I would rather have Cliff Kingsbury over another head coach. But at this point, I would rather have Cliff Kingsbury over Urban Meyer. I never, Tony, thought I would say that. Yeah, I, I didn't think you'd be able to say that either. But <laughs> Urban talked about the fact that your GM has been in place for a while, and I think they've built that team uh, the proper way. By the way, speaking of team building, the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast has relaunched and it is rebooted with Eric Crocker and Ryan Tracy as your host. They bring uh, scouting, analytics, and all of those things to the table. Follow the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast on YouTube, the Odyssey app, and wherever you get your podcast. And wherever you get that podcast and our two podcasts is absolutely free on all platforms. So, yeah, that, that's the question, of Bo and Alex. Uh, what's going to happen here? One of the big fan groups here in Jacksonville, they're already saying on to Cincinnati because that's our week four opponent on Thursday night. Most people are chalking this up as a loss. However, I will say this. This is the NFL, and people can up jump the boogie and, and surprise you because I thought you guys would just walk right through Minnesota based on what we saw in week one, and that absolutely was not the case with you guys. You guys had a had a tough game. Yeah, I mean, the Arizona still – they still have to cr travel across the United States. They have to play a game early, early kickoff. It's going to be hot out there in Jacksonville, as it always is. So, you know, those are a couple different elements that are coming into play here. And then, of course, them if they let Jacksonville hang around – that's going to be bad. I mean, if this is going to be a tight game going in the fourth quarter, I think anything can happen. They do, as Alex said, they need to take advantage of this team as it's down. We said before the season started that it's a good thing that they're facing Jacksonville in week three because you don't want to face them in week 10, week 11, week 12 when Urban Meyer might figure it out. I mean, this is a guy that won 80% of his games. He's a successful head coach. I know things are tough right now, but I would much rather the Arizona Cardinals face them right now and down the line, and I think it's a big opportunity. And if they fall short, you know, it the Arizona Cardinals are going. This is going to impact the Arizona Cardinals more so with a loss than it would with the Jaguars, because yeah, the fan base is ready to move on to Cincinnati, where the Cardinals come Monday morning, they're going to be trying to pick the pieces up. Yeah, and real quick, because I want to ask you this: so what we had last year with the Cardinals was exactly this setup. 
It wasn't as glamorous. It wasn't as, you know, uh, uh, pop corny. Cardinals started 2-0 and last year. Then they lost to an inferior Detroit Lions team. It was at right. home. Then they went to Carolina across the country and lost on the road to a team they should have beaten regardless of the injuries that they had with Buda Baker, et cetera. Jacksonville is an NFL team made up of adult men who get paid to play a game. So there's any game, any time, any place, one team could beat the other. Now, let me ask you, because you are where we were watching a team three years ago with Kyler Murray as a rookie. Has he shown Ty Trevor Lawrence that he's worth all the pub this offseason? Have you seen flashes where it's like, oh, man, this dude can ball. We just have to put things together around him, offensive line, et cetera, to make it so. I, I think so. And the reason why is because... Uh, something that uh, we've been known to do around here at the quarterback position is check down, check down, check down. And now uh, NFL veterans and uh, media people alike are saying he just needs to take the check downs, just take the check downs. Because what it is is he's trusting that big arm and he's he, he's trying to – you can almost say it's hero ball, but that has a real negative connotation to it. Uh, but what, what it is is you see a kid that's not used to losing, that's really putting everything on his shoulders, and he's making throws down the field when sometimes he probably does need to check down and be patient. It's just that I think he wants to win so bad, and he wants to be the reason why this franchise turns it around, where he has to stop, uh, I would say, trusting himself too much. It hasn't reached the Jameis Winston level of trusting himself too much, uh, but it, it is about him actually trying to be the leader and trying to put the team on his back. So when a guy does that, that means he's fearless. And if you're fearless, that's fine. But if you're scared, then that's a problem. And I don't think he's scared one bit. Tony Wiggins, Alex Clancy, Bo Brock hanging out here. Crossover Thursday, locked on Cardinals, locked on Jags. We were talking about a little bit off air before we get really into this matchup. We talk about Trevor Lawrence, Urban Meyer. Who I think, you know, when you're coaching pros, that kind of holding players accountable and kind of to try to provide that structure that he did in college, it doesn't work as well where Cliff Kingsbury kind of empowers these guys, lets them do their own thing as a player's coach. I think that's where he kind of has the edge right now. And Urban might want to take away from the former Texas Tech coach uh, who was unceremoniously fired from his alma mater. But uh, who's, who's in over his head more? Trevor Lawrence or, or Urban Meyer? Our listeners would love to know. Um, I think Urban's in over his head, but I, I've walked away from that phrase a little bit because it's not as if he's drowning. What it is is he's swimming too fast, and he's trusting himself. He has a life preserver, man, and he's not using it. He's, he's trying to swim across the ocean without any help. And, and you don't have to do that. Just grab along the boat, man, and ride with it. Because leading in the NFL, in my opinion, is more navigating a ship than it is driving a speedboat. And I think what he's doing is he's trying to drive a street, uh, steamboat or, or a speedboat when really it's the size of a love boat. You have to set things in place and you have to navigate the ship because it is a player's league. So I don't think he's being like overly strict on the players. I do believe, though, that uh, along with anything else, if the losing and the mistakes start to sap you and take everything from you because you're not used to it. I think what that is, that becomes contagious. And then you have to worry about the guys in the locker room. We haven't reached that point yet. Alex, Nancy, Bo Brock locked on Cardinals, Tony wig locked on Jaguars coming up next. We're going to, we're going to give Tony some questions. This was, this was just the, the little appy. First quarter, Trevor Lawrence, Urban Meyer. We're going to dig deep into James Robinson, maybe why they got rid of Gardner Minshew, and if this defense is trustworthy. Um, you know, Locked on Cardinals listeners, what Bo and I know about cars. Amp, what do you know about cars? Well, I know if something goes wrong with my car, I know where to go, and that's at rockauto.com. That's why. Rockauto.com is a family-owned business, been up and running for two decades. I have personally used rockauto.com for not only car parts but accessories. I even put my kids on it, and uh, they just tap in, in a computer because what happens is when you go to chain stores, they ask you a bunch of questions that you don't know. How many liters? I have no clue. only thing I know about liters is the ones I drink out of a plastic bottle. Uh, <laughs> what size is your engine? I don't know that either. And so when you're standing in there asking these questions and you're a dude, you look kind of silly, right? Go to your computer. Go on rockauto.com. Just type all the information in. You're going to get a knock at your door and you're going to get your parts and they're going to be the right ones. Now, there's a little box. They're going to ask you. 
who, who sent you? Don't say Bo. Don't say Tony. Don't say Alex. Say locked on because we want to know, want them to know that you went uh, to them because the right people sent you to them. So it's rockauto.com for all of your parts and accessories for any make, model, or vehicle that you might have. Go to rockauto.com. All right. Second segment, Thursday edition crossover, Locked on Jaguars. Tony Wig, Locked on Cardinals. Alex Clancy, Bo Brock. Listen, this matchup is... It's a weird matchup because these teams don't play each other a lot. So there's a lot of question marks. There's a lot of uncertainty from both sides. But I want to know, and fantasy football players want to know, damn it, wide receiver one, is it Marvin Jones? And is RB1 James Robinson? Or is it TBD on both? And obviously, we're talking predominantly about the game on Sunday, not necessarily with the fantasy intonations. It's it's running back one is James Robinson it is the problem is they haven't been close enough in the red zone and, and haven't been there often enough to really get him going. And I'll get back to him in just a second. And right now, Marvin Jones is wide receiver one. And the, the reason why is because he's reliable. So you get a rookie in the huddle. You're going to throw to a 30 year old before you throw to a 23 or a 24 year old. DJ Chark right now is the designated deep threat because he's the fastest guy on the team. LaVisca Chenault is the Swiss Army knife because he does everything. And Urban believes that uh, he can use him in some of the ways that they were going to use Travis Etienne, who, who's out. Uh, uh, you know, Le Le Chenault is very, very versatile, but it just hasn't really manifested itself yet. And there's a couple of plays on social media where you, you can even see it's almost forced and teams know when it's coming with the way that they're using him. But James Robinson, you know, it's a little bit of an anomaly, an anomaly because Urban wants to play fast. So in order to play fast, that sounds like what you guys are doing with, with your quarterback. Fast, get out, script it, get into some rhythm with no huddle, and use your big-arm quarterback. Well, last year, James Robinson was the focal point of the offense, and he was running with two tight end sets, and they did a lot of stuff off tackle where he made one cut, and he got up the field with his vision. That's not manifesting itself right now this year, but he still is averaging a pretty decent yard per carry, but he's only touching the ball an average of like nine or ten times a game from the backfield because they're getting behind and because they're trying to really implement their passing game. So I wouldn't touch either one of those guys. Marvin Jones, I probably would because it's a PPR league. But right now, I'd be sitting James Robinson down until he gets his legs up under him and they figure out exactly how they want to use him. It's crossover Thursday here. Locked on Cardinals, locked on Jags. Tony Wiggins, Alex Clancy, Bo Brock. We appreciate you guys making locked on. First thing you tune into each and every day. And, uh, you know, you look at the sack numbers. Are they a little deceiving? With just two sacks of Trevor Lawrence, or is that because he's been so flustered and just he's getting rid of the football? He's just making poor decisions. Um, it's not deceiving. They play uh, uh, pretty well in stretches. Uh, they have to stop getting penalties. They have to stop getting uh, or having unforced errors and getting inopportune penalties. But uh, the one thing about Trevor is he has those legs on him, and and even though he's not scrambling and running. Uh, the way I saw Kyler Murray spin around and all that the other day. Trevor's not doing that so much, but what he is doing is he's being evasive and he has a real good pocket presence about him. And, uh, you know, rushers have to be wary of the fact that if you give him a lane, he's going to go because he is athletic. I think there probably would be more sacks if Minshew was still the quarterback, even though he was a good improviser too, but he's not athletic the way Trevor is. I think people uh, have a tendency to not, over pursue Trevor and give him easy running lanes combined with the fact that the offensive line hasn't played terribly. They've been okay. Uh, but um, you look at those stats and you look at the pressures and the pressure percentages and the fact that there haven't been a bunch of sacks and you know what you tell yourself, this is not an O and two football team. But then when you look mm -hmm. at the rest of the game and you go, this is an O and two, fo <laughs> o and two football team. So uh, that's why they're 32 in the locked on podcast power ranking. So the thing is, is, there are elements and numbers in, the, in my podcast yesterday even said that numbers don't lie, but they don't tell the whole truth. And in that area, that's one of them. You know, what's interesting, real quick stat, you know, Kyler Murray and how well he's running the football. And, and as far as the volume, it's down. He's just more efficient. But he, he only had 17 yards through his first two career games. He was real. T uh, you know, he, he wasn't one that wanted to tuck it and run, especially early on for the Arizona Cardinals. So that might be the same thing that's going on with Trevor Lawrence. He play, Trevor plays better out of play action. The problem yeah. with play action is play action doesn't work until you establish the run. Yeah. And right. if you're and if you're behind, it's also not going to work because people will be like, OK, give it to the running back if you want to. We, we ain't worried about that. The thing is, is this team has to really find its identity. And this is this is the thing. And I know you've probably been waiting on this. I've been trying to put it together like I like 
fried chicken and I like ice cream. I don't like ice cream that tastes like fried chicken. So sometimes you can have two things that probably work, but when you blend them together, they don't. And when Urban Meyer had his press conference talking about at the beginning of the season that him and Daryl Bevel, that it'll be Daryl Bevel's offense with a sprinkling of his, I went like this because I know that sometimes that doesn't work when you're trying to get a guy you're trying to get players acclimated to one thing but the, the player the coach that's that's supposed to be teaching them he's trying to get acclimated to the other thing so how can he teach that when all he knows is what he already knows so sometimes that's the problem too and that's why in the preseason when they had the quote unquote quarterback competition a lot of people around here thought that was a waste of time and so far that thought it, it seems like the correct thing yeah, and I, I do want to ask, would you rather have Trevor Lawrence hair or Gardner Minshew's legs with with the jean shorts? I don't think it's really time for that right now, though. Uh, let's flip to the defense quickly. When you, I'm not going to let you answer. We're going to talk about that for 15 minutes. Oh, uh, when you have Kyler Murray as the opposing quarterback coming into town, is it take away the legs or try to make you beat him with his running? Because what we saw with Minnesota, they were like, you ain't getting past the line of scrimmage. You're going to throw the ball, and you're going to beat us with your arm. What do you see Jacksonville doing on Sunday? Which poison are they picking? i tell you what. If they go all-out blitz and play the way Joe Cullen likes to play with man coverage, which is what they always do, um, and, and, and scheming up those uh, blitzes, they're going to be in trouble. The, the best way to play him is uh, sort of a gap and hold. And what that means is get a pass rush, but don't get beyond his shoulders because if you do, the, the danger with him is he can run it. But the other part of it and that, that people never talk about is he doesn't run to run. He'll run to throw. I saw him throw a ball across his body last week. And that's dangerous when you have a guy with the IQ of D-Hop because you saw last week, I saw the highlight, man, when Kyler spent, D-Hop spent, and they met in the end zone. So – that's the that's the danger of it, man, with him. Uh, you, you almost got to pick your poison. You can rush, but you have to be really, really smart with it. The key is first and second down. You have to get them in long and down the distance so you can play coverage. Okay, really quick, before we go to our segment, would you rather have Trevor Lawrence hair or, or, or the or the, the jean shorts? <laughs> you got to pick one. I, I kind of want to know now. Well, I'd rather have Trevor Lawrence's hair because I already got uh, the other kid's legs. You know, I, I don't want to have to show you. I don't want to have to stand up in here and show y'all what, what we're working with over here. So, so I'd rather have his hair, man, because you know I'm a barber by trade. So, you know, I, I could work with that. I mean, Bo gets uncomfortable. So, uh, we, thank you for not showing us. So, coming up next, um, we're gonna. It's gonna be our turn at the firing squad. Tony Wiggins is gonna ask us all the insightful questions. Hopefully, Bo doesn't flub any of them. We'll be right back. With the crossover Thursday edition, Locked On Cardinals, Locked On Jaguars here on the Locked On Podcast Network, betonline.ag. Week three is coming up. BetOnline is your number one spot for all pro and college football action this season. There's got to be some action coming on on Thursday, I would think. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, contests, betonline.ag continues to be the number one source for everything football. Go to the website or use your mobile device today to get your 100% Welcome bonus using promo code NFL100. You deposit 100 bucks, they match it for 100 bucks free from football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Again, for your 100% welcome bonus on your first deposit, use a promo code NFL100. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. Bo Brock. Everybody knows Maxion's on Tuesday, but hey, Cardinals fans, Jags fans, it's on Tuesday. This is an incredible app. The Get Upside app. Everybody who needs buys gas. Everybody buys gas. Listeners are making up 25 cents every gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or the Google Play right now. Use the promo code TOUCHDOWN and get a bonus 25 cents per gallon on your first fill up. That's 50 cents cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using GetUpside. Just download the app for free. Use the promo code TOUCHDOWN. They get a 50 cent per gallon cash back on your first tank. Some people who drive off the lot are making as much as two, dollars $300 a month in cash back because they're behind the wheel so often. And there's no catch. The cash back gets added right to your account. You can cash out anytime, your bank account, PayPal, or even e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app, use the promo code TOUCHDOWN, and get 50 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank. That's promo code TOUCHDOWN for the GetUpside app. 
All right, segment three of a crossover between Locked On Jaguars and Locked On Cardinals. Normally in a game like this early in the year with someone coming to Jacksonville for a one o'clock kickoff, I would say that the heat is something that you have you guys have to watch out for. But we're talking about a team from Arizona. They got sun just like we got sun, right? So my thing is with you guys, uh, besides from the heat, I want to ask you this. How did your franchise overcome so quickly the fact that they chose a quarterback that they traded up for in the first round and then came right back the next year and chose another one. Normally that is a recipe for disaster. However, they pulled it off, man, without that guy getting fired. So go ahead and fire <laughs> away and tell me, have when did they stop getting on him about making that decision? Was it when Kyler finally turned the corner? You know, it's strange, Tony, because it's like the, the organization was able to brainwash the – fan base it was like the alex likes to say it's the men in black red dot you know and then they just flash it and it's like hey 2018 never happened let's just pretend we didn't draft draft josh rosen we didn't go three and 13 with one of the worst constructed rosters ever steve keim he went from 2017 to 2019 and uh you know he made the right decision i think that's what everybody kind of was comfortable with that kyler murray was this you know not once in a lifetime, but he's part of this tier of quarterbacks that has this opportunity each and every season to compete for an MVP award like Trevor Lawrence, I think, is going to be, like Patrick Mahomes, like Lamar Jackson, all those guys, uh, because Kyler Murray's that good, and he can change the face of the franchise, and so far he's done that. you know, And he's done everything that everybody expected him to do. He won the Offensive Rookie of the Year. He took the step last year, 37 total touchdowns, and this year he's tied with Tom Brady for the most total touchdowns with nine on the season and he's just electric every time it seems he has the ball in his hands or he's making a play with his arm. So, you know, that, that was the big thing. And then Steve Kime figured out the general manager, how to build a team without Bruce Arians. Cause that was a big learning curve for him. And uh, so far I think he's done pretty well. I mean, it helped that Bill O'Brien and the Houston Texans gift wrapped it. Uh, Deandre Hopkins, one of the best receivers in the game. And that just kind of changed the perception of his organization, and people wanted to come play. J.J. Watt, you had uh, you you started hitting on some draft picks. Buda Baker emerged as one of the great safeties in the league. So you know, it, it just took, it was a big combination of things. But number one was Kyler Murray being the absolute truth, being number one pick coming out of Oklahoma. And that's dangerous, uh, Alex. Let me tell you why I say this because they drafted Hassan Reddick, who was a position positionless player. Kyler yeah. Murray, who was a short quarterback. Then it was uh, Isaiah Simmons, who was a positionless player. And even this year, my man, the linebacker from Tulsa, he, you know, I don't know if he's really made an impact or not, but he's like a 390 pound middle linebacker. <laughs> and that's weird. That's weird. So how's he winning with the non-traditional analytics and the non-traditional way of drafting players high in the draft in terms of uh, size and weight and position, and he's pulling it off. He's not winning. But so, I, but to your point, I completely understand where you're asking this. Kyler Murray is the reason why. Because when they drafted Kyler Murray, that was his Hail Mary. Because if Kyler Murray didn't work, he'd be gone. And that mm. was his last chance. You know, we're going to do this. He was being selfish with that pick. I still think that. We're very happy that it's worked out, obviously, that it's paid dividends. Steve Keim isn't good at his job. What the main job is talent evaluation, listening to your scouts, crunching the numbers, drafting young players, elevating them, teaching them, and then paying them. He hasn't done any of that through the draft. Buda Baker, Byron Murphy, Kyler Murray, that's about it. And Bo, like we can go back from 2013. He's never been a good drafter. Like we, they've never had a fourth round guy that's popped. We'll see what happens with Marco Wilson, David Johnson for about twenty four games was that guy. But I mean, all in all, this is flying by the seat of their proverbial pants with the off season moves and off season acquisitions Steve Kime has made to make up for his complete ineptitude when it comes to the draft. So how he's winning is because Kyler Murray, and I know that Bo and I, we don't agree necessarily with all of this. I'm a little harsher on Steve Kime and Cliff Kingsbury than he is because I'm rational, but when it comes to, <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to, and I'll let Bo uh, piggy Bo, piggy, um, piggyback on this, but I just think that this is still very new. They should have made the playoffs last year and they didn't, and there's some disconnect, but the off season, we'll see if it, it, we'll see if it's worked. It has through two games. We just don't know, you know, in the entirety of the season, if it will. I mean, is that completely I mean, unfair, that Bo? 
I, I think it's really unfair. I mean, it was catastrophic with, with Tony outline in 2018 and to already be back is pretty incredible, pretty impressive. You know, so should Steve Kime have been the guy that was pulling all the you know strings on that? Probably not. He shouldn't have kept his job, but he did. And you are starting to see players he drafted make an impact. Kyler, DJ Humphreys is your starting left tackle. Isaiah Simmons, who Jag fans need to look out for on Sunday, is going to be a problem, number nine. And boy, does he know a lot about Trevor Lawrence. He's playing at a high level. He's leading the team in tackles with 17. So he's starting to hit on some draft picks. Rondell Moore, talk about small in stature. I mean, Jags fans are going to be like, how did these little small guys, Rondell Moore, Kyler Murray, and Buda Baker beat our ass? Because they're that talented. Like, they just, they're, they're just little missiles that shoot around the field, and they're just that good. It doesn't matter how tall they are. So, just, just so we understand, if there's a plan of attack, and I'm sure you guys are going to say different things because I can tell y'all are thinking differently <laughs> about the team. Just so we can develop some sort of idea and a plan of attack, and I'll probably uh, actually steal it all and use it on my podcast Friday when I dis- when I tell Jaguar fans how they could upset the Cardinals. I want either, each one of you to give me an Achilles heel somewhere that Arizona has shown some weakness or that you personally know that they're weak, even if they haven't shown it yet. And the thing that you all think might end up biting them in the butt this week or at some point down the line. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, I mean, there was the turnovers. There was a couple from Kyler Murray, despite his NFC West or NFC uh, Offensive Player of the Week award. Uh, he was they were able to overcome that, but mostly it's that defense. There was such a difference between Week One and Week Two in sl- slowing down the run game, and then also getting pressure on the opposing quarterback. And uh, they just didn't get that in Week Two. And the Vikings were able to kind of have their way in the first half, uh, and it took the Vikings missing you know, a potential game-winning field goal for the Cardinals to be 2-0. and So they didn't play perfect. They were far from it in Week 2. And uh, if it happens again and it becomes a trend, they got problems because, you know, the Jags, you know, the cliche exists for a reason any given Sunday, and it could certainly happen to this Arizona Cardinals team if they're not careful with the football and they're not creating pressure and, uh, and making things uncomfortable for Trevor Lawrence because the defensive secondary is trying to figure itself out. There's not a lot of stars in that defensive secondary as far as covering guys. Yeah, and I'm going to go on the opposite. Thank you for letting us both answer this question because normally we trade off. I think it's play calling. I, I think it's it's been play calling, and it'll be play calling until it's not play calling. Uh, Bo's heard this a lot. I apologize for you and the listeners that Cliff Kingsbury puts together a great movie trailer, but the movie's not great. He'll sell you on a great movie trailer because some of his play calling is – exquisite there was the the bootleg in week one from the goal line for kyle that sprung kyler and the perfection masterful qb draw call that had everybody's head spinning when colin Murray ran right up the gut around the 12 or 14 yard line in week two but what we see is when plays need to be called correctly kyler murray sometimes more than he should be bails out the play call when it doesn't work there was a 31 second drive where the Cardinals could have iced the game and not allowed Minnesota to get the ball back. 31 seconds. Now, part of that was on Kyler because he ran out of bounds on first down because his momentum was sending them that way. But it's on the coach to have a game plan when you are an offensive coach to be able to call plays in succession to win a game. And I just don't trust Cliff in perpetuity yet. So I think that's still the weakness. I right, So go ahead, both. He's crushing a play caller that his offense has scored 38 and 34 points because in the last two we're games. not going to do this. We're not going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> not in front of Tony. I, uh, we're not doing this. Uh, no, no, I love a little. I can be Dr. Phil. I love a little. Domestic <laughs> school, you know, because I'm usually a part of one or two of them myself with those guys in Houston. But I'll go ahead and start one. But no, listen, <laughs> if there, I, I, I'll, I'll piggyback off of what you guys said and attach it to something I said earlier. Right now, Trevor Lawrence is second in the league at throwing the ball down the field outside of Tom Brady. This is this sounds like this is the week that he needs to check down. This sounds like they need to chip Chandler Jones with a tight end, and he needs to take his shots downfield. So uh, we'll see if that happens. I tell you what, if you want to know the ins and outs of this week's game, don't listen to us three. You need to listen to the Locked On Bets podcast with your boy Q and expert Lee Sterling. Lee is hitting at a high number right now, so listen to that. It's sponsored by Bet Online. Before you go to Bet Online and actually make your wagers, check out the Locked On Bets podcast with your boy Q and Lee Sterling, and you can subscribe to that on the Odyssey app, 
and wherever else you get your podcast and just like our podcast it is free on all platforms fellas this has been a ball man i love it we can stay here all day and i can start an <laughs> argument because I, you know i'm a barber by trade so I can, I can throw it out there and see who picks it up man and y'all can just go ahead and fight as far as i'm concerned the rain I mean, go through the roof i've already embarrassed Bo enough so yeah. i appreciate it all right man and i'll <laughs> never forget i will never forget in our season preview Bo with the picture behind him dunking <laughs> Alex. That was the funniest thing. That, that was the fun. Ever. I will never ever forget that picture in my mind because I look close. I guess I married say, life is boring, baby. I'm married life close, is boring, like, I guess. Is that Bo Brock who can't get two feet off the ground actually tomahawk dunking on Alex Clancy? I said, whoa, man, that's that's petty level. That's petty on a level I ain't even seen yet in a long time, bro. I'm going to tell you. Yeah. It happens every day, Tony, right on oh, the so good. podcast. Oh, all right, man. You guys take care, man. And thank you for having me. And good luck to you guys. Well, not really. I was going to say good luck, but <laughs> let's, let's keep everybody healthy on Sunday and we'll see how it goes.